All right, guys. So let's do these two together. The more water we flow through a pipe, the better. It keeps it clean. I'll show you what the guys did. They went ahead and grabbed that downspout. They ran the armor pipe along the house right here. Clean out. Right here, we have a Y. The guys went under the walk. An inline catch basin, always to grab the shingle gravel. Super easy to maintain. We got our laser level right there. So we kept shooting this trench bottom. We just kept going out until we finally had the top of this pop-up below the pipe. If you have the top of your pop-up below the pipe, it can't hold water. It just can't happen. You're going to empty out all the pipe that this pop-up is below. And then we went ahead and we took the P-stone along with the fabric and made a little dry well so that after the bulk water has been moved, after a big rain event, What's left in this pop-up can just leach into the subsoil. You're going uphill if you go this way. So we want to grab this downspout, run it across the front, pick up this other corner downspout, keep those two on the same line. The guys grab that downspout, Went ahead and ran the armor pipe along the house because the grade breaks in this direction. Grabbed the second downspout, wide it together, and I can't emphasize this enough, guys. Never use a T, always use a Y. A T, the water just slams to a stop. You want to keep water moving, you want to keep the velocity up during a hard rain event. We have our inline catch basin for shingle gravel. Super easy access, really, really nice clean out if you need to get inside your system. And again, with the laser level, the guys shot this trench and they just kept going out until the top of this pop-up was below the pipe upstream. Went ahead, piece stone around the pop-up with fabric as a soil separator, creating a mini dry well so that it can leach away after the rain event. Okay, it's really flat in here, and right now the water is too close to the house, and this has been a problem. So this is what you can expect from just a standard pop-up. Since there's no way to access the inside of the pop-up, what happens is there's just no way that leaves big, large items of organic material can find their way out. You can't service it. You can't, you can't get in here because... The way this pop-up is made, there's this bar going across, so you can't fit your hand in there. So, you know, I want to just take this opportunity to show you what we see every day. You know, you can just see the grass roots. We're all growing down in here because this is not done like a little, you know, mini dry well. And then once that started to plug with organic material, you know, just nothing was getting out. Nothing. So that's why we're here. They've had trouble with their roof runoff water and it's caused them problems. Never just run 10 feet away from the house. I know the big box stores sell pieces that are 10 feet in length and it's very misleading, but get the water away from your structure. Get it far away from your house. The farther away you get from your home, typically the more fall you're going to get. And what that means, you're going to empty the downspout line and it's not going to hold a lot of water. A lot of times up close to the house, it's really flat, so the line is going to stay full of water. If you can get the line out far enough, you will empty the entire system. And when winter comes, there is no water in the line to freeze up. If you live in a sunbelt region, you don't want it full of water because it's just going to end up giving off a pungent odor. Stale, stagnant water that sits during hot weather just ends up giving off a really strong odor. And for whatever reason, earthworms find their way into these pop-ups when they're full of water, and that really smells bad. So build your systems so that they don't hold water. 
Whether you put in a clean out up at the house or one of our inline catch basins that you can use as a clean out access or both, a lot of people like to have all the options available to them. And sometimes your situation won't allow for it, but when you can, the clean out access up at the house is just a really nice convenience. Maybe you never need it, but the day you do, you'll be glad you have it. It does take a little more skill to install one of these than to just take a gutter adapter and connect it to the corrugated pipe and run it out to your yard. It's not a must. Again, it's kind of a luxury. Again, I'm going to keep reminding you guys, always use a Y fitting when merging two lines together. Never use a T fitting. The water just slams to a stop. You want to keep water flowing freely. All right, so this existing downspout ran to here. That's not far enough. You know, just 10 feet and... They sell these pieces that are 10 feet long in the big box stores. So unfortunately, people are misled. You want to go farther than that typically. It's super flat up here, so we need to get the water out of here. There's no way we can empty this line. It'll just freeze in the winter. Super flat up here, so it's just going to stay full of water. So we ran it as the grade dropped. We're going to empty the line out entirely. We have our clean out right here. And then we have a short run. We have two downspouts, and this is a commercial style roof. It's just insane. We Y them together. All right, you see all the Y fittings that we use. We don't have any T's on the truck. We're gonna dig out a little extra dirt to fit that larger fitting, which is a Y fitting right there. When you merge two lines together, always use a Y fitting. You see all the Y fittings that we're using here in this system. We wanna keep the water flowing freely. I can't emphasize this enough. I want to show you guys all the whys that we're using just so that you see what the pros are doing to keep the water flowing, to keep the velocity up. And yes, you want to build an access. On these long runs, you want to build in an area of access, and that is our inline catch basin that is super easy to run a garden hose through or a camera or a jetter if there's ever an issue where a chipmunk falls down into your downspout system and drowns. These crazy things happen. They bloat. They plug the line. So always make sure that you build your system so that in the event it needs service, it's serviceable. It's super important. When you build a underground downspout system, you'll kick yourself later if you can't access that pipe. If you can't access that main line, you definitely want to bring serviceability, convenience when it comes to your design so that under any circumstances, you haven't painted yourself into a corner. And I can't emphasize enough about how bad those pop-ups are that have a bar going across them because they won't let the leaves come out during the hard rains. During the really torrential rains, when the radar Doppler is showing red, orange, and yellow, that blows all the leaves clean right out of the line. Our pop-up has this big door, and it lets everything out. These pop-ups don't. I mean, this has been a failed experiment for over 30 years. A cheap garbage pop-up like this is going to clog your line. You're going to end up with a flooded basement or crawl space over this. It's going to end up causing you a lot of headache. Here at French Dream Man, we have the answer. Super easy to get your hand inside. Go ahead and grab leaves, sticks pine cones, anything that floats. And you have this big plate, the grass can grow up on the plate instead of growing over the discharge line. So this way, it's waiting and ready. The guys put the sod back, they backfilled, did a real nice job. Got our inline catch basin for shingle gravel and it's super easy to get inside. If you wanna just run a garden hose, run a jetter, whatever it may be, you just want to have access. Don't paint yourself into a corner. People always want to know how far do you run your downspout. You run it until the top of the pop-up emitter is below the pipe up there. That's the only way you're going to drain it out so it's not holding water. So sometimes you end up with quite a far run. Again, Super easy to get leaves out of there. We're not having any issues with lawnmowers cutting these off. It's a big enough lid. Water has no problem floating it during torrential rain events. Under low volume rains, we have two ports. They come out the water just under low volume rains. It comes underneath the plate. Literally just, it's a dry well. It's a soak away. 
when this gets super saturated, you can see some water start to swell up. But again, we got two ports right under the hinge here for the water under low volumes. And then when it's really moving a lot of water because you have a torrential rain, well, that's not gonna have a problem keeping up. You can put four downspouts on one pop-up if that's what you wanna do. If you have a shingled roof, you definitely want one of these inline catch basins. Shingle gravel is going to come down the downspout and then within the first 10 feet, it's going to start to slow down. When water's pushing on it, you know, you can push it down into a catch basin. That's why we put these inline catch basins. Now, anytime you connect pieces of pipe together for a roof runoff system, use an external coupler. Notice how the guys are using an external coupler here. Pay attention to this. It's really important. If you use an internal coupler, you're going to create this damming effect and leaves are going to get hung up on it and not make it to our catch basin pop-up combination. That was an external connection, guys. It was on the outside of the pipe, not the inside. Beautiful install by the pros here at French Drain Man. Can't say enough good about these guys. Please give them a thumbs up because they definitely, definitely have earned it. So what we do is we take this fabric, this soil separator, and we put it on the, on the soil itself between that and the pop-up. We pour the pea stone on the fabric around the pop-up, on the outside of the pop-up, the catch basin you saw and the pop-up are done exactly the same way. The pop-up and the catch basin are done identical. We have an open bottom situation with the pop-up. We have holes drilled in the basin bottom. We put the fabric underneath them, and then we go ahead and we put the P-stone on the fabric, and the P-stone is around the pop-up. This is a soak away design. Basically, you don't want water to sit in your pop-up. You're going to invite tree roots, all types of bad things to happen. We've talked about it earlier in the video as far as the pungent odors, the mosquito hatchery, just everything that comes with it. It's a petri dish. You want to build it like a soak away so that any water that's left behind after the rain event and all the bulk water has been moved through the drainage system, now what is left at the very end of the line, because that's where water is going to sit, is the lowest point of your underground roof runoff system system and that should be your pop-up i'm going to explain the only maintenance that comes with a system like this there's only one thing i recommend and that's all right now this pop-up can be so easily accessed we got pea stone all around the outside of the pop-up and at the bottom of the pop-up guys did a really good job on that install can you reach in here grab leaves out if needed Put your shop vac in here, suck it out, or just take the whole cover off and then suck it out, whatever you want to do. Um, if the grass grows over this, that's why we did this, this turf restrictor plate. I think we did a great job of making this look nice with the herringbone pattern. I know everyone's pretty vain about what they put in their yard, but the grass is going to grow over this. That's okay. We just don't want it to grow over this. That way when you have a really hard rain, torrential rain, the water can flow. You want to make sure that the water will daylight. I would recommend once a year just cutting the turf off of the turf restrictor plate to kind of reset the clock. And that's it. If you're responsible about your roof runoff, you will not end up with flooded basements and flooded crawl space. If you found any of this information helpful, give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. And until the next video.